actors from the film um, who I think can share and enlighten us further on this beautiful film. I'll also share that the uh, director, the director himself, um, worked at the uh, Burjel Branje refugee camp in Lebanon, and that's where he collected all the stories that were made into this narrative, of course, which is a fiction narrative. Um, please welcome Nadja Saeed. Thank you so much. And our good friend Mohammed Bakri. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. As Muhammad makes his way down, never sit in the back. <laughs> um, tell us a little bit about who you, the character you played. Since sure. We don't recog recognize you. With the <laughs> yeah, I know. I look so different. Actually, to be 100% honest, I'm in the English version, not the Arabic version. Oh. So I technically wasn't in this film. But um, I am in the English version. He did different versions in different languages. So I played Hannah, the aunt with the cigarette, who was talking about... Um, uh, well, you saw, you just saw it, but she was talking about her childhood and, and how she, um, she, you know, she asked her, do you hate them? And she said, we killed them and they killed us, but I only hate the ones who still hate us. I think that's the line that's the most memorable of that particular character, so. And Muhammad, who did you play? Uh, Say into the mic. Uh, Lutfi, the, the grandfather. Um, this is, of course, I mean, there's, there's a lot to discuss here, and there's, there's many different levels and layers to this film, um, both on the, on the personal, on the political, on uh, the artistic. Um, but I want to start, I know, I know as actors, you, you get into, into roles, and you could either take it from your, from your own life or, or not, but where do you connect to this film? That's, that's what I want to ask on a personal level. Um, well, for me, it's quite intense. Um, it's actually very moving and parts were very difficult to watch. Uh, I was born in, well, I'm American, obviously. I, was, I grew up on the Upper West Side. My father was Palestinian and my mom, who's here, is Lebanese. So I was born in the 70s. So this was, much of my childhood was spent in Lebanon, um, in shelters, um, during bombings. But I actually never um, had the I never saw or or even knew about the refugee camps because my my father's family had already had American citizenship in 1948, so they came to um, my grandfather had come to America, so they had American passports. Um, at the time, I think a lot of Christian Palestinians were offered Lebanese citizenship, but my family turned it down. So my father was able to come to America. Um, and then my mother's Lebanese, so I had this history of going back and forth to Lebanon and being half Palestinian, and I actually didn't go to a camp. I went to Shatila in, in 2010 for the first time, and that was an overwhelming experience. So I think, um, for me, obviously, it's a very personal connection, um, having both sides in me and always thinking about why do the Lebanese have this these camps and why do they treat the Palestinians this way and of course coming here and arguing with Jewish people about um, you know why don't we talk about how the Lebanese and other people treat Palestinians and I think a lot of that is very difficult to talk about for me and and so but I think in a in an animated film there's a it's a much easier way in and and the personal stories help a lot for us to understand that it's complex and it's it's very painful for all of us in many ways, so. What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> How do you personally connect to this film? Fortunately, I was born in uh, El Bane village in Galilee and not in Burj al Barajne, fortunately, because uh, my uncle in uh, 1948, uh, he escaped because he was very afraid of what's going on in every village and village during 1948. Um, so he had three children. One is uh, Bassam, one is Basim, and one is Hassan. And 
his uh, mother-in-law, the, the mother of his wife, asked him to leave one of the children with her because she was old and she couldn't go to Lebanon by foot. We are very close to Lebanon border, Galilee. So at least he remained with his uh, grandmother and the mother after two or three kilometers decided to come back and to, to pick him, to bring him back because she couldn't leave him alone with his uh, grandmother, with her, with her mother. So she came back and the grandmother said, no, I am not giving you, I, I must keep something from your smell. I want to smell him. And that's the way he remained in my village. If I was one of the two children, the other two children, I was living in, in uh, Burj al Barajni. So my connection to Burj al Barajni is, is a very personal connection. And uh, two years ago, I visited Lebanon and I went to Burj al Barajni, the real one, not this one. And it was more than horrible, more than. I think uh, the director was so kind that he didn't bring the miserable life and smells yeah. and uh, everything, you know. So anyway, that's the way I was connected to the film uh, psychologically. And when Matt Kruger called me and said, I want you to be one of the characters, I was more than happy to help him with my voice. I remember when you told me when you had visited Lebanon, um, an amazing story, how when you came into the village, your family all were smelling you. Mm -hmm. They all came over to smell you. They wanted to smell a little bit of, of, uh, of home or of, of your world. Yes, the smell, I believe that many people are connected with their memories by smell. For example, when I visited uh, Lebanon, uh, a friend of mine who, who was a writer, Mohammed Khashan, he died just one day before I arrived to Lebanon. And I brought from his village, Sohmata, some stones and some fruits to, to give him. But he was not there, so the family were, the first thing that they did, everybody was smelling the stones and the fruits that they brought from Sohmata, which means that people are connected by their senses to the place, not by their, me the memories are connected directly to, to the senses and smells are very important. Um, it's very true. Um, Nacho, you brought up the, the artistic choices of the film and how that actually, I think through the animation, which is beautiful and what a great choice to make the different times in different kinds of animation and what kind of talent that actually takes also to, make, to, to bring those, to weave those stories together correctly, um, artistically. And, and on one hand, it makes it easier. On the other hand, um, it, it makes it less human. You know, it's not as, it's, you're not seeing the real thing. It turns it into a, uh, excuse me for the term, a cartoon. Right. What, what do you think? Tell me a little bit what you think more about these, about the artistic choices, and did you talk to the director at all about his use of animation? I think that, um, I did talk to him a little bit about it. I think, um, well, I actually, when I saw the film Waltz with Bashir, um, which I'm sure many of you have also seen, it's animated, um, and as I said, I was in Beirut as a little girl in 1982, so watching that film, I was very moved, but it wasn't until the end where there's like the last scene with the fate, but what I will say that both of those films, that one and this one, have done really well, even though they're animated, is really create a reasonable, I mean, as Hamid said, like, I went to Shatila, and that's a very good representation of how they build the camps with the blocks and the streets that kind of, but the thing you're missing is the dirty water dripping down and the filth all over the place and the smell, so it's not exactly the same. Um, but, uh, what I find interesting about this is that even the puppet, the, the three-dimensional version, you know, he, you notice he does the 2D animation for the memories, like the 
cartoon and then the 3D animation for the story as in the present day and even we talked about this he said that even the anim the puppet sort of characters it looks like everything has been thrown together from whatever's lying around which was also to give a, a sort of vibe of what it's like to live in these circumstances with which I thought was really interesting um, I, I I think that because the subject matter can be really, really alienating for people and really difficult. I do think that the animation, as I said, lends itself to getting the story across more easily, but you are correct. There is a sort of sense of, um, I think, a disconnect from them as people. But I think that it's, I thought this was quite beautifully done and, and actually was a very good way in having experienced the reality and this version. And, and finally, and this goes to both of you, but I'll start, Muhammad, this one, I'll start with you. On the human level, the, I mean, put politics aside, but I mean, this is a story, I mean, for me, I was able to connect personally to this story because I have a grandfather. Um, this, is, this is something that even despite the animation, which might be a little bit of a disconnect from the human element, um, the emotional level is, is so strong. I mean, I, I cry at the end, and I, I'm, I'm sure many of you experience that, and that, that, that human connection is so powerful and so universal that uh, I, I wonder where, where, you, where, where that impacted you the most. I saw the film in, uh, in Jerusalem. Uh, with the Jewish uh, audience, just only Jewish audience. It was in Cinematheque of Jerusalem. And I felt that the people in, uh, in Israel were more connected to the film than the people here. I mean, they didn't feel accused. They didn't feel that they are attacked because it is animation, because it is, you know, not real. I mean, it's like, well, it is animation. It's, it's easier to accept. I felt that, uh, I mean, artistically and politically and humanitically, it works more by the animation. And I felt that in the audience, I mean, they were moved, and nobody, you know, in Jerusalem, uh, not even in Tel Aviv, which is more open, more, you know, liberal. Uh, I felt that uh, he did a very good job in this. Uh, and the, the good thing, even in the text somewhere, there were some sentences that not like uh, protest or just attacking or accusing it. It's like more kind to accept and to understand and maybe perhaps to identify with. I think so. I don't know. I want to ask you, how did you feel about the film? I mean, as Jews, as, as people who are related to, to the cause, the, the one who caused uh, a refugee. How did you feel? I, I would like really to, to, to hear you more than yes. And, and Morgan, we are happy to to also open. But wait, let's uh, just let uh, Najla also say something. Oh, about uh, the human connection. I think for me, uh, well, uh, one of the things about the film that's very realistic in terms of Arab families is the way we all live on top of each other. And you just sort of pop into your aunt and then you pop back downstairs to your grandpa and then you pop back up and everyone's yelling at each other and sending food up. That happens even in the nicest apartment building, uh, whether it's, so that for me, and also um, I was, as I said many times already, I was a little kid sort of at the same, in the same age around in the 80s and sitting in the bomb shelters and not entirely knowing what's going on and then the adults constantly talking about people who died or who were, oh, he was shot or and they killed him and you hear these things in the background all the time and who are these people and what is this struggle and what, so for me I found this very much um, it was very similar to my childhood of feeling all this love and warmth and also another thing that 
I particularly noticed that he did in the film, which was a huge thing for me when I, I went back to the Middle East after not going there for almost 10 years as a kid. Um, I went back when I was 18, and even though everything in Beirut had been bombed and in Gaza was you know, atrocious, they all had gardens and flowers and fresh fruit and fresh vegetables and were constantly watering the plants and talking about. So for me, um, these moments that were very, uh, very much like the family moments in, 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 and, and in our past and in our families, um, that was very, very real to me. But, and also the connection with her great grandfather, it very much reminded me of my relationship with my father, that there was this thing that was constantly inside of him and sort of, and I understood it in a sense. I knew what had happened and, and that he had lost his home as a little boy, but I, I didn't really get it. And um, I, I constantly trying to find out from him what I needed to do or what I needed to say to continue this struggle and not totally understanding it, but knowing that I just love this man very much and I wanted to do what I could to sort of help him carry that into the future. I'd love to open it now to you, to your reactions, your connections and uh, your questions. Um, so we have here. Was it? Very, very beautiful film. And I think that everyone can relate to the suffering of people. I'm, I'm always curious about how Lebanon never accepted the Palestinian refugees. They were always refugees, all these. Well, I can speak to that just in, okay. Yeah. I thought it was question. And I, I think that the other association might be, as you said, when the film was shown in uh, Israel in in uh, Jerusalem, actually, um, the hundreds and millions of Jews that were expelled from Iraq and Syria and Iran and Egypt and all the Middle Eastern countries. So there was a connection of this having to wander and having to lose your homes. Thank you. Can I just, uh, I think uh, in terms of Lebanon, it's a bit misunderstood and it's somewhat confusing. When the, Le the Palestinians first came, the Lebanese very much, and their official position is that these are people who are, um, have a home of their own and will someday go back. So that was the temporary um, idea, which is why they're in camps and they were never given um, citizenship and, all, and they only can work in the camps or they'll shine your shoes or give you a manicure in Lebanon, but they can't have a real job. Um, that was originally meant to be because the Lebanese believe that they have a home and they will one day go back. However, as many of you probably know, Lebanon is not the most organized country. They also have a terrible sectarian system, which um, in, in a less, in a very uncomplicated way, I'll just say this, um, the majority rule in Lebanon is Christian. So Palestinians are mostly Sunni and Christian. So if given citizenship, it will upset the balance. However, this affects me personally because my father's Palestinian. Um, are these reasons that they, they don't continue to give them citizenship? Possibly, but it's not discussed that way. And right now in Lebanon, the Palestinians are walking marching along side by side for their rights with the Lebanese people. And there is um, still hope. Um, but I don't think that, one thing that's important to me is that we do point out how some Palestinians are treated in certain Arab countries, but that doesn't, doesn't make what happens in Israel okay. It's all horrible, uh, is just my point. I just want to make that clear. I say, who is shooting the boy? I came late. In the, oh, I, that's 1982, so uh, could be anybody, really. I don't know. I don't know. I think some people who, I felt it's indication to Sabra and Shatila. Yeah, I think so. Uh, by the Falangist and by Mr. Mr. Sharon. Sharon. Yeah. I want to, uh, before we close, I want to ask, uh, um, so the reception, it's amazing that this film, first of all, is screening in Jerusalem. I'm so glad that 
this film is being brought to us here and um, and that our community can can hear this story as well. Um, do you know um, more about the reactions internationally? Where else is this screening and how how it's having an impact? The reactions? Uh, you mean... Where, has the film been screening in other countries? Has, uh... I know they did show it in Lebanon a few months ago. I'm not sure how it was received, but I'm sure that was probably an interesting reaction. <laughs> I saw it only in Jerusalem. I was in one screening. I saw it in Nazareth also. And uh, the, the Israeli audience and the Palestinian Israeli audience uh, react the same. I do, can I just say one more thing? I think just to go back to the question of connecting to it. When I was a little girl, I read a book about a little girl in the Holocaust who had to go live in a camp, and the story was her memoir of how they made their life from makeshift things like the potato sacks, and, and I love that idea, and I think that's also in this story, and it's more about people who just want to live, um, and that's the main point. He, um, Matt's really wants that to be, you know, this happens in all cultures and all communities all over the world, and people make life from what they have. And I think that that's meant to be a connecting piece, as you were saying, because it's also part of the Jewish story and many other stories. So um, it's more about the human story of, of, of making something out of nothing and just having the will to live. And I'll, I'll second that by saying that I think often the lives of refugees specifically are cheapened and um, and and somehow, you know, you hear everything that's going on in Syria, everything that's going on all around the world. Um, and and you forget that every human being here has a grandfather and a grandmother and a parent and and a will to live. We're going to take one last question up here. Just to respond to Muhammad's question before is is in terms of the, the reaction as a Jew, as a, uh, watching this. I just felt that I'm pretty left, but I still found it very jarring to see Israeli soldiers as the bad guys. I mean, they were the bad guys in this movie, and it, it's, I, don't think, I don't think we're used to seeing that. And <laughs> it, I was uncomfortable with it. And I'm curious, in Jerusalem, people weren't, even though it's animation, people were not uncomfortable with that or how did they react to that yes i feel i feel they were like accepting that and uh, they didn't feel you know as i said in the beginning i felt they don't feel accused they don't feel that somebody is pointing on them you did this no not at all uh, and I have a very long uh, Roman uh, love story with the Israeli audience for, for my films, you know. I, I mean love story in quotation mark, not really. I mean, I am very problematic in Israel, and I am a part of the film. I am the bad guy, and they, they, they loved the film. I was in shock. So I think, I think some people... Because it's done in this way, like animation and uh, not political, not direct politics, it's a, a story of child with her grandfather and grand and family. And you know, it's, it's, it's very personal because the film is very personal because Matt's Gruro, the, the director, his mother was in the camp for a couple of years. She was a volunteer, and when he was a child, he was coming with her to the, to the camp. He lived there with his mother, so he has some very personal attitude and uh, relationship with the people and with the names that you heard in the film, in, in, uh, in the story. So I believe that this is another reason that make the Israeli people, like everybody in the world, they have their life, they have their parents, they have their grandmothers, grandfathers, they have very similar life, even if, even if they live in, in their own country. I believe that also the Holocaust and the stories of the Holocaust, uh, they, half of the community in Israel are, 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 are sons or daughters of survivors. So they saw 
similar stories, not the same stories, but similar things about to be occupied or to be depressed or to be oppressed by strong people who are stronger than them. So I believe that the, the weakness in this world unite the people. I mean, the weakness unite the people more than the strength or the power. I believe so. Maybe that's the, another reason. So m many reasons, but I felt my feeling was really very positive feeling, and I, I, I left the, the hole with a great hope in my heart. Great. <laughs> I'd say in general, I, th I find it, I mean, part of it is the animation. As we said, it's a very accessible film. I think it was made to be accessible. I think the fact that it has an English version, the fact that it's actually being shown in Jerusalem. Most Palestinian films actually do not get shown in Jerusalem. People in Jerusalem don't get to hear these stories, and, and, and that even, doesn't help. Even though it was, it's, uh, it's personally something I connect to in terms of the story, it still was very difficult for me to watch, and I sort of dread it in, this, in a similar way, because I'm half Lebanese and, and, and so, you know, it, it sort of complex, it makes it a little more complex too, I think, for us to understand that um, there are many ways in and there are many common elements, but it's also very confusing for all of us in, in, on the day to day and how to move forward without having all these things from the past cloud your head too much. It's amazing to have both of you here. I wanna thank you both for being a part of this conversation. I want to thank our partners, uh, partner, the um, uh, Oral History Master of Arts program at Columbia University. Um, thank you for being a part of this. Thank you all for joining us. And uh, join us throughout the week. Tomorrow we have a full day of films, and we're here till Thursday. Thank you very much, and spread the word.